Article 7, are you in favor of the adoption of Amendment Number 6 as proposed by the Planning Board for the Hampton Zoning Ordinance as follows? Amend Article 4, Dimensional Requirements, Table 2, Section 4.8 to reduce the maximum permitted amount of impervious sealed surface from 85% in all zoning districts to 60% in all residential and general zoning districts and to 75% in all business zoning districts. The amendment would also set forth new standards for impervious surface coverage for redevelopment. The new percentages and standards will be outlined in footnotes to the dimensional requirement table in Article 4 recommended by the Planning Board. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 7? Moved by Mr. Olson. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. McNamara. Mr. Olson, would you like to speak to Article 7 as Chair of the Planning Board? Well, Article 7, as put forth by the Planning Board, asks if you are in favor of reducing the maximum allowable surface area from the current 85% throughout town to 65, excuse me, to 60% in all residential in general zones and to 75 percent in all business zones. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mr. Diener. Jay Diener, 206 Woodland Road. Just waiting for a slide to come up. Um, I want to take a couple of minutes to give you some background on this issue and these numbers will help to explain it. 10 is the percentage of impervious coverage that results in impaired waters, which are impacts on our water quality and aquatic life. Below 10% of coverage, water resources are protected. 25% of impervious coverage is where we start to see degraded waters, where there are changes in the water quality, where you see algae blooms in your ponds and streams, where you see diminished aquatic life present in those ponds and streams, your water is significantly degraded. 33 is the percentage of impervious coverage currently in the town of Hampton. In 1990, it was 20 percent. Now it's at 33 and it's continuing to climb. So we're already above the level at which our water resources are degraded. 35 is the average of impervious coverage permitted in other seacoast communities. It ranges from a low of about 15 percent to a high of about 60 or 70 percent, but the average in those communities is 35 percent. 85, 85 is the percentage of impervious coverage that is currently allowed in the town of Hampton. This is not sustainable. The reason it's not sustainable, may I have the next slide please? is because you get this kind of a result. We have storm surges, we have heavy storms that result in flooding, but the problem is that with the increased amount of impervious coverage we have in town, there's simply no place for that water to go. So it sits on our roads, it sits on our driveways, it finds its way into my basements and to your basements. And that costs us money. It costs us money in increased taxes because we have to replace culverts with larger and larger culverts. We have to repair our infrastructure and because all of us as property owners have to repair the damage that's done to our properties because of all this additional water that's seeping into our homes because there's no place for it to go. Next slide, please. So we're proposing a new ordinance that reduces the coverage from 85% to 75 or 60%, 60% in, in residential uh, lots and, and general zones. The reason for 60 percent is because that's the amount of coverage that we currently allow in our aquifer protection zone and it's a, an amount that makes sense. It's less than halfway to the 35 percent average in most other communities but it's a big step forward in the town of Hampton. The new standards apply to all new development meaning all lots that have yet to be developed. All currently developed lots are grandfathered meaning that these new standards don't apply to you unless you look to make some improvements on your property. If the value of the project on your property is less than 50% uh, of the assessed value of improvements on your property, you can maintain the amount of impervious coverage that you currently have, even if it's over the proposed standard, you just can't increase that amount of coverage. If the value of the project you're proposing is greater than 50% of the assessed value of the improvements on your property, you have choices. You can either adhere to the new standard or you can install a system to manage stormwater on site 
and maintain the existing amount of impervious coverage that you have. So what we're looking to do here is to stop the escalating rate of impervious coverage that's doing serious damage to our town. We can't eliminate it. We're not looking to eliminate it. What we think we've done is come up with an article that is fair, that is balanced, that offers flexibility, and that is ultimately going to result in a better environment for all of us in Hampton. So I hope you'll support this article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diener. Mr. Emmerich. Tracy Emmerich, 207 North Shore Road. Uh, I complimented the conservation Jay on their, on their work. I was part of it. They came before the planning board several times until we had a public hearing. And at that public hearing, a citizen got up and said, do you realize this is, this is a, in essence, a blanket over the town of property taking by the town, by not allowing people to develop their property to the extent we have? And I thought, hmm, a very interesting point. So we had another public hearing subsequently. And at that public hearing, it came out that if this article passes, 70% of Hampton will be non-conforming. That means 70% of property owners will have to go to a board of commission in order to make alterations of expansion of their property on their land. I think this is an overreach. I understand the principles behind it. I applaud the principles behind it. The cow is out of the barn. We've already, we're already to that percentage of failure. All this is going to do is create havoc with the boards and commissions. I, I would not support this article. Thank you, Mr. Hammer. Mr. Jones. I believe the public citizen Mr. Emmerich was referring to was myself. I encourage people to watch the December Planning Board meeting on that. It was a very interesting exchange of ideas. Um, but I did want to stand up and, and speak a little bit. Uh, I don't want to be redundant and repeat what I said uh, at that meeting. I encourage everyone to, read, or to watch the video. I haven't read the minutes, so I don't know if it accurately captured the uh, meeting or not. This, uh, this Article 7 serves, I mean, it has the same problem as Articles 2 through 7, which is, of course, as I said earlier, as a legislative body, we're being asked to vote without reading the law, essentially. And I think, I think all of us have been repulsed from recent years when we see our U.S. Congress passing laws upon us that they don't not only don't understand, don't even try to understand, they don't read them. Articles 2 through 7 are doing just that. Now, I've managed to read some of the reference documents that purport to be the law on 2 through 7. You'll notice that Article 2 is basically a correction of a flawed law that the Planning Board put forth just a couple of years ago. Mr. Jones? I don't see any particular problem with that. Mr. I am Jones. speaking to the point. No, Mr. Jones, I've got to get you on Article 7. I'm you made that. an eloquent point relative I'm to the, getting the theory, but seven. I need you on Article 7. But as I was saying, the, the overall theme of what's being put forth by the Planning Board is, is really a series of flaws here. And this particular article is very repulsive to good government. And it says it right even in the summary. Let us divide the town. Let us divide the town by treating businesses different than residents. Let's take more of the property from one and not so much of the property from another. Divide and conquer. Create division. We have other articles on this warrant that are doing similar things, and I'll speak to that when, it, when the time's appropriate. But this is just bad government. We should be speaking to things that, if this is a town-wide issue, then the entire town should be serving to the solution equally. We shouldn't be putting more of an onus on one and less on another because one has more political influence than another in the process. No, no, no. This is not good government. I'd say vote no on Articles 3 through 7. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Yes, sir. Good morning. My name is Ashley Meyer. I live at 25 Malt Road. I'm a resident of Hampton for about 34 years. This article, in my opinion, is unconstitutional. It is, it is denying me the use of my land. The setbacks, I believe, are equal to the 85 percent or the 15 percent impervious surface right now. They're not changing the setbacks. They're just saying you can't use your land. 
That, to me, is taking my property without compensation. Part of it would be what's going to happen when you get ready to sell it. You go to the bank to sell it and they say, wait, you can't use 60% of your land. It's only worth 40% of the value you now have. That's why I think we should vote no on this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Article 7. Uh, Mr. Moody, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Article um, 7 will appear on the ballot as uh, printed. We're on to.